Hi, I'm Tom Miggett from Tom Miggett Photography. You may recognize Karen, who was our model uh, a few weeks ago in the episode on how to recognize soft and hard light. Well, Karen came running into my office last night in tears after she watched a video from a French professional photographer who has a channel on YouTube and is quite popular. And um, she, his video was about how to edit portrait and she was in tears because what he was talking about and the result of his uh, development was extremely scary, so she said. Um, so she was like, oh, Tom, Tom, you gotta do something, you gotta do something, you gotta tell people how to edit portrait. And I'm like, well, Karen, first of all, I've already covered that topic a couple of months ago. And then, I mean, who am I to say, this is the way you should be editing portrait? I can only tell people how I do things and then they're free to follow me or not. She's like, yeah, but you don't understand the last time when you talk about Photoshop, you had a plugin. Well, the majority of people don't have a plugin, so you need to explain them how to edit portrait without that plugin and just in Photoshop. And I'm like, okay, all right, I see your point. But before I actually go and do that video, I need to actually watch uh, the video you just watched. And she's like, oh, you sure? You sure? I mean, this is scary. This is really scary. And I'm like, okay, okay, Karen, I'll go watch the video. And I did. And... I cried. I cried. I really cried. And yes, it was scary. It was really scary. Uh, so scary indeed that I've actually decided to do this video. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually first of all going to show you um, his method and, and then I'm going to tell you um, I'm going to give you another method, another way of doing it uh, using Photoshop if you don't have any plugin, if you only have Photoshop. Let's dive in. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop with a photo of my lovely wife I've taken a couple of years ago. And um, what we can see here is some regular human skin imperfection in the forehead, under the eye and on the chin. And this is exactly the type of things that you want to retouch in when you do skin retouching. Um, so let's follow his method. The first thing he does is duplicating the background layer, which we know is a good uh, thing. And then he does a filter blur and gets the Gaussian blur tool. For those of you who are not familiar with this Gaussian blur tool, what it does is basically blurs your image. The more you move the slider on the right, the more it's going to blur your image the more you go on the left, uh, well, the less it does it. In this case, it says, well, focus on the skin and basically increase the blur level until you're happy with the loss of detail per se. So in his case, I think a value of six is actually not bad. Uh, and then you click OK. And what it does afterwards is basically uses the eraser to uh, reveal some parts in your image. So here we're going to reveal the eyes a bit like this. Uh, reveal the other one and let's zoom in because we're going to do the lips as well so let's reduce uh, the size and let's change the uh, this to a soft um, brush like this so it's a little bit more natural uh, here like this reveal the teeth the upper lip this. What he also does is basically doing the contour of the nose as well. So although he, he uses it at 100%, I would not do it at 100. But it's his method, but just for the sake of it, I'm just putting it at 50 here and the nose over here. And then we go up uh, and we're going to do the eyebrows as well. So let's do the eyebrows. I'm going back to 100% following his method to the letter and basically in going over the eyebrows like this, same over here like this and yeah right there and then he does the eyes so if we go um, sorry not the high it's the, uh, the hair so let's go over the the hair follow the hairline something like this here we go and that's it that's his method for edit retouching skin. So I think he forgot something, to be fair with him, I think he forgot one essential detail to his method uh, before he, he, he ended the video. It's that you need, once you reach this step, you need to actually get up and step away from your screen about five to 10 meters away from your screen to fully appreciate the benefits 
of uh, such a retouching method. So I'm not going to back up and, and um, leave my chair. What I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom out and mimic what it would be to actually be 10 meters away from my screen at this stage. So let's zoom out. And I think if you at this level, I think you can really see the value of his editing method. Uh, I think the uh, you no longer see the skin imperfection. Uh, you see the eyes, the, the, um, the hair. Uh, I think it's a good thing, but you need to be at that level of zooming out. So for those of you who are professional or not, and have customers or not, but at least you think that your photo one day might be printed, in that case, what you need to do is don't do this. Uh, take this layer <laughs> and put it where it belongs, which is the trash. And let's see what you can do using purely Photoshop and uh, to edit your photo in terms of skin retouching. So um, let's go through the theory first of all. The, the method I want to talk to you today about is called the split frequency uh, retouching method. And uh, why split frequency is because we consider two frequencies. We consider the low frequency and the high frequency. The low frequency is all about your highlights, your light, your tone, your color in your image. The high frequency is all about the texture in your image, such as the hair, the contour of your face, the contour of your features, such as the nose, the mouth, the teeth, the wrinkles, the natural wrinkles you have on lips and um, so everything that is texture as well as the skin pores, everything that is texture related, that is the high frequency. Everything that is color tone related, it's the low frequency. And so by basically creating a layer for each frequency and using only the layer you need during your edit, you will make sure that if you want to affect the texture, then the tone won't be um, affected by it. And if you want to change your tone, your texture won't be changed. Why do we want to do this? Well, simply because here, if I was to duplicate the background, and let's say I wanted to um, touch, retouch here, that uh, imperfection that you see here. And I use the cloning tool, and I basically take a reading right here and go like this. I do it in purpose like this, but what you'll see here is I basically duplicated, fair enough, I no longer have uh, the uh, the imperfection, but I basically messed up the uh, the texture, as you can see here, and I also messed up the uh, the light, the lighting. So here's a bit darker than over here. Uh, I could have made it a little bit worse. Uh, let's see, if I do it here, I want to repair this, and I'm going to take a reading right here, and I'm going to increase the size, and let's see what it does. You see, once again, there's a difference. It doesn't look uh, very neat. So I'm affecting both the texture and the tone in my image. And that's not what we want. So you see, if I look, you can really see the effect it has. So by using the split frequency method, then you won't have that problem. So how do we do this? Well, we're going to duplicate our background layer twice. Once, twice. And just for the sake of the tutorial, I'm just going to rename uh, my layer. So here I'm going to call it the low layer and here I'm going to call it the high layer. Oops, let me cancel this. The high layer. And let's deactivate the high layer. Just focusing on the low uh, frequency layer for the moment. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, zoom out and I'm going to choose uh, the filter, the same one. So it's the blur, the Gaussian blur. Here what value am I going to use? Well, it really depends on the size of your image. Uh, I would say for the SLR that have about 18 to 32, 36 megapixels, you may want to choose a value between 9 and 12. It happens that the value you choose in the Gaussian Blur tool tend to always be a multiple of 3. I don't really know why. I think it has something to do with the algorithm behind it. Uh, but here in that case, I'm just going to move it to 12. So. And what, now yeah, that I've explained to you what the low frequency is, you can really see that the Gaussian Blur tool, what it does is it increases the detail from the low frequency, hiding all the high frequency detail. So we no longer have texture here, and that's what we want. You basically want a value that um, at which your texture disappears in your image. So if we zoom in, we do see darks, and highlights, but you no longer see the texture in your image, and that's exactly the level uh, that you want to achieve for that low uh, frequency layer. So you click OK, and that's set for the low layer. Now we're going to focus on the high frequency layer. So you activate it, which obviously 
hides the uh, the low frequency which is underneath it. And here what you're going to do is you do image, apply image. And here you have a choice. If you're on 16 megabits like I am, you're basically going to select first of all the layer of your low frequency. So low here. And if you're on 16 you select invert. And then the blending mode you're going to choose add. And the scale is going to be uh, of 2. So like this. And as you can see here, you can really see only the texture. If you're on the 8 bit, 8 megabit, you still select the low frequency layer. You do not use the invert option. The blending mode is going to be subtract, and the scale is going to be 2, and the offset is going to be 128. And you get that result. So let's go back because I'm using 16, so it's going to be the add blending, and it's going to be scale of 2. What you can really see in the image is what we have is purely, purely the texture. I do not have colors. I only have the texture, uh, the pores, the contour, the eyelashes, the hair, really only the texture information. So we're not going to work on the image just like this because it's a bit uh, disruptive. So what you do is you change the blending mode here to um, linear light. And what you see is nothing different from the beginning. So in fact, if I actually hide the high and the low frequency layers and compare it to my initial background image, you'll see there is absolutely no difference. The reason for that is what we did, we took the initial image, we split the uh, frequency, the high and the low, and by merging the two of them, we obtain exactly the same image as the beginning. But now, we can edit the high frequency when we want to touch the texture, and we can edit the low frequency when we want to affect only the tone. So let's just do this. So I'm on the high frequency layer here, and I, as we saw, we have uh, some impurity right there. So I can actually use the healing brush tool, and I can just go like this. And by doing that, I'm not actually uh, affecting the light and the tone of my skin at that particular uh, location. So I can just go through it like this. Here we go. Uh, here we've got hair and you know I'm crazy about hair. So let's just do this one very quickly. Uh, here there's something here. And I'm not going to do the entire image but you get my drift. If I deactivate, uh, if I compare it to before, you can say I've just done a few changes uh, to the forehead. So now how about the uh, color, the highlights, the tone in your image? Well, it's the same thing. Now I'm going to select the low, and instead of editing the low, I could actually have a um, transparent uh, and empty uh, layer on top of it. So I'm just doing this. And let's say, here we have uh, the eyes, and you can see here we've got shadows here, which, which is not that great. So what we can do is we go to the brush tool, and we're going to get a reading. So the reading here, I'm um, reading like this, and basically if I change the opacity to something around 14 to 20, and I can basically paint here, and what you can see is I'm not changing the texture. I'm really changing only the, um, the tone of the image. So let's look here. You can really see the texture, right? We've got a few um, bumps over here under the eyes. So I'm taking my reading again, and now I'm just going over here, and you can see, look, the bumps still remain. I'm not changing this, I'm only changing the uh, the color. And here it's dark, let's get a reading over here, and let's go through it gently. And maybe another reading right here, up in between. And I'm not changing the texture, so that's how you can actually really touch the uh, the tone of your image without affecting the texture and changing the texture without affecting the tone of your image. <clears throat> the um, the tool, the plugin that I've used in the previous episode, basically that's what it does. It takes a reading, you, rem you remember if you haven't watched that video, I really encourage you to do so. Uh, basically I was taking a reading inside a plugin uh, in the zone of the skin that I want to be um, addressed, kind of an average uh, tone of your image, and then what it will do is basically apply that average uh, tone, tone to the whole image. And that's how I was actually affecting 
the tone, the color, the highlights of the image without affecting the, the texture. So uh, here we can see as well this, uh, there's a bit of shadow here. So uh, once again, we can take a, uh, a reading over here and, and basically just there. Here, the same thing. We're going to take another reading. We're going to take another reading right here. And we could just slightly uh, affect him here. And we could uh, do as well another reading here and basically just affecting. And you see, if I'm actually zooming out, and let's see how we looked like before. Well, that was before, and that's now. So you can really see the effect and the advantage of using this technique when you want to change the tone of your image, the, the highlights, without affecting the, the texture or vice versa. So I think you understand that really the, the, the idea of this method here is very, very simple. It's much better than using the cloning tool or using the Gaussian uh, blur tool and just painting all over like this uh, French professional photographer uh, explained. I'll let you judge of that. And uh, well, until next time, this is Tommy Gutt saying, if you like it, well, capture it and edit your portrait the way you want it. I won't judge it. Ciao.